We have just got back from our summer Khalakhari trip and I have lots of footage to process. Before I get to that though, I have long wanted to make a video on how we plan these long trips, primarily about the food. We have had many awesome chats with campers this trip and this was a common theme with every family or couple having a different way of planning and doing things but always curious of others. So here I'd like to share our way. I'm a bit of a foodie. I love good food and that should not vanish when we camp. So trying to balance simplicity and good food is important to us. I realize this is not for everyone so I would like to talk about how I plan and prepare the menu knowing full well that everybody has their own way and I'd love you to share your ideas with us. So I'm going to go through 10 of the tips I use when planning a long camping trip in the bush. I start planning our trips almost a year in advance and that's simply for the bookings. But then about three months before we go, I start to get more detailed. Um, and this would be my first tip. I think about where we're going, a rough idea of the drives and the picnics, what we want to do what kind of weather we expect, drive times, and then I do a rough Excel spreadsheet. I know this may seem like overkill to the more spontaneous campers, but I find this process very relaxing and fun. It gives me a chance to daydream and come up with new ideas. I usually have drive and picnic ideas, and then a rough daily menu. I use books, YouTube, social media to figure out what will work, what won't in places that we haven't been before and the places we have been before, you generally know what works and what doesn't. My next tip is start shopping early. I usually take the meat out of the shopping packaging Already I start packaging it in plastic bags after I've seasoned and marinated as necessary. I usually prepare my meat before I package it and then I put it in blocked containers. I've got a standard container that I use and I freeze them in a plastic bag in those blocked containers. Once they're frozen, I then actually take it out of the plastic containers before I pack it into our freezer. This leaves us with so much more space in our freezer because packaging takes up an enormous amount of space and it's simply a waste. Never mind the fact that when, once you're camping, you end up with all these polystyrene packaging that you don't really need when you're camping. Um, because I use the same size container, package, packing the freezer becomes so much easier because it's like Tetris, they're all the same size blocks. When we're in the park, I put the meat we're going to have on that day back into the container that I froze it in to defrost so that there's no mess and um, spillage. And that way, everything's in the same size container. We only need one container by the time we're there. So this brings us to tip number three, and that's to pack your freezer in terms of need. The food that you're going to eat at the end of the trip, I try and plan and pack at the bottom of a freezer. And the food that's going to be eaten first, naturally, I pack at the top. This minimizes time that the freezer is going to be open when we're in the bush. I don't know if you've had the same experience as us, but freezers don't seem to keep the cold temperature as well in those hot summer temperatures as they do at home so we try and prevent opening the freezer as much as possible once we're there tip number four is to start the trip with fresh produce in your meals and to finish your trip with the more non-perishable foods or foods that preserve the longest this is part of just planning your menu so that you don't have much waste and that you actually still get a relatively healthy menu with good fruit and veg in your trip. This trip surprised me quite a lot in that I discovered many foods lasted a lot longer than I thought they would 
out of the fridge and rather just packed securely in a drawer in a dry container, they survived quite well in the heat. So it's always good to every now and again just Google what is the best storage for certain fruit and veg that you particularly want to take on a trip and do so, do according to the instructions because not everything needs to be refrigerated. And we learned that this time. I mean, we had pineapples last nine days in very hot Kalahari summer temperatures. And that was really great because it meant that we could actually eat it over a longer period of time and not rush to eat it all straight away. Tip number five is to have a separate cooler box for the things that you're going to open up and have every day regularly like cool drinks and ice and those frequently used items during the day that need to be cool but don't have to be kept at a set temperature. Tip number six is an important one for me personally as it's my biggest time saver and it gives me an opportunity to have things that I wouldn't normally think I can have in the bush. And that is that I pre-cook, debone most of my stewing, curry or porky inspired meats and recipes beforehand and then freeze them in the same way that I have done the meat. I freeze them in those plastic containers and then once the meat inside its marinade or sauce or juice is frozen I then take it out of the plastic containers in the block and put it in a freezer bag. Naturally meat freezes very very well and in fact tastes a lot better when it's already been pre-cooked inside the spices and kept frozen. I cook off a lot of the water to minimize liquid and it means that after a long day in the park all we have to do is add veg and potatoes, make rice or roaster brut, and in 20 minutes we've got a really good curry, stew, porky inspired meal. We always light a fire, but I don't particularly like eating with artificial light. I don't like the bugs that come around my food, and I don't like doing it when visibility is low, especially when there is all kinds of nighttime critters that can come out. It also means that my kids who are used to eating early can settle down sooner because they will get grumpy if they don't get to eat soon. The hardcore poikiers out there will not like this tip because they do generally have that sequence of hours poiking in layers and it's a process but it, it doesn't work for us in the bush and it's not something you can do regularly although you might want the food. So we just simply have bypassed that and we don't poiki as often, certainly in the bush. We will do so when we river camping or in a, in a different environment, but not when we're in the Khalakhadi or the Kruger. So tip number seven is a follow on on that. Often when I'm preparing food at home or making a stew or a curry at home, I might just double up on the meat and I just separate it and freeze it whilst cooking our normal meals at home. This just saves me time and it's useful in just doubling up what you make and freezing half so that you've got that dish to have in the bush. This works well with anything that you would have with rice, roasted root or even a pasta. So tip number eight I haven't seen many other campers do and I, I simply don't understand why because we do it on every trip and it's one of our most important is we actually buy bread dough from checkers or from our local bakery and we freeze it in these blocked containers. I use the same shape for everything and dough defrosts quite quickly and rises and is really really easy to use from frozen and you've got fresh bread, fresh roaster brit with as many meals as you want. So it's a very handy tip to buy your dough and actually just make roaster brit or bread on the fire. Tip number nine is to freeze fruit. Those fruits that are easy to freeze would generally be like berries. 
I often have a little container or bag of frozen berries that I can add to a tonic or a gin and tonic. My kids add it to their cool drinks. We add it to breakfasts. So it's a very handy way of getting some fruit in the trip as well. And finally, tip number 10 is to enjoy the planning. It is so much fun to work through the preparation and to think about all the things you want to do. We might each have our own food ways and food types, but at the end of the day, we all have to plan these trips. And it's important that we enjoy the process as much as we enjoy the trip because it really just makes it so much more meaningful and valuable when you've taken the time to think about these things. My way may not be your way, but regardless, it should be fun. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and if you have, please like and subscribe. If you have any tips and ideas that I haven't mentioned, I'd love to hear your ideas in the comments below. Until the next time, happy travels!